Penny Vachamishi, and today we're going to visit the Bibliothek, the library. But Nachman of Breslov says, how could someone pass a mikveh and not go inside? How could a yid pass a mikveh and not toivu? I say, how could someone pass a library and not jump inside? When our Zaydis and our Babis were denied access to the bibliotheques in Europe, they were denied the beauty and the access and the liberty of information. Today we're going to go to the kids section. The kids section is not just for kids. How would you feel if you graduated yeshiva and you're, you're a love somewhere, or you're a chashavayid, and someone asks you and a child, what did, what did Yiddishkeit contribute to the world? And then you could start answering stuff that don't make any sense, and then people will notice it, just like a diaper needs to be changed. People start smelling it. And then there's a child, and he answers a very good answer, and it ruins your day, because you're not, you're not 25 anymore. You might even be 40 soon. And the kid answers exactly what Yiddishkeit contributes to the world. And it's not animal sacrifices or a big temple in Jerusalem. It's not the Old Testament. It's a bunch of books on Anna Frank, one after the other. And Anna Frank, she's not a scientist, but right above her, is a bunch of books about Einstein. In every way, in in a, in a, in, a, in, a, in a strictly scientific way, then there's poet, there's like it's stories, there's things that can make you excited. If it's if you claim it's humanity, if you say that, that, that if you're like you know you you watch some Asia Torah video and or you read Chabad.org and you got convinced you didn't do much thinking, and you said yeah the Torah ca gave humanity uh, to the world, they're gonna ask you, where, what, what's the source, what have you got, what's the information, and. Uh, you should be able to provide something. They're not going to ask you to know the whole Basi Lagani by heart. But you should be able to answer something. And if you can answer nothing, someone's at fault. Someone wasted your time. Someone gave you nonsense. Thomas Jefferson. Really, really schwach. You know? Uh, um, next to Thomas Jefferson, look, there's a story about uh, Joan of Arc. You know, without science... We would never know. Uh, the, we would never know uh, uh, about uh, Joan of Arc. We would think she's really a prophet. We wouldn't know her medical condition. There are people today, grown people, who claim to be uh, professionals who have studied uh, Joan of Arc and looked into the entire thing, and they still believe that she had voices from God. Uh, science would never be able to confirm such a thing. And the more you study her and you study the patterns, you understand that. Uh, understand her medical condition and it's much better to be able to look at things through a rational framework a, a rational setting a logical setting uh, where you have um, where you study things and you can predict as opposed to um, losing the whole the society would be much more difficult losing that logical framework even without all the technology that we have today Usually the microscope is a symbol of science. People uh, have studied, it's something that you could see the difference between what the Hebrew priests and priests of any religion uh, were trying to figure out 4,000 years ago without the microscope. You could study, um, you can study an ant socially, how it lives in its ant colony and how it interacts with other ants. Or you could study the actual ant. You can study the leg of the ant. And with a super microscope, you could study the cells of the ant. And all this is not just for fun. This gives us information that changes 
science changes the way we see the NASA world forever. Imagine you're a shliach in an educated community and one of the children, you're telling a story about Paro and Mitzrayim and the kid asks you, which Pharaoh? Uh, and then you could, you could be a Chacham and you could say, the Bible do- it says the Jews were enslaved to an unnamed Pharaoh. You could, you could do that. But if you don't know how to do that, you can't, you can't even be smart about it. You're just going to have to say, what do you mean? And you get lost. You have to call back your Rebbe and tell your Rebbe, you're an animal, you ruined my life. You have to, because that's your life. Your life is your ability to... It's your mind. It's your, it's your education. You don't want to walk around Puyadishiyadin. You want Arichas Yamim. You don't want Puyadishiyadin. Human nature and Jewish thought. Case why persons matter. This guy is a really nice guy. He's writing a book trying to make uh, it possible for people to to believe that he's going to pick um, pick out things from Judaism that proves that we care more about the people. And a humanist view of it. And then this Meshuggah is still hanging around. The most important words ever written are the Ten Commandments. Okay. Commandment number eight. Do not steal. What if a kid's starving and there's a truck of food? The Rebbe. This is supposed to be uh, a, a contemporary book. Yes. I mean, in other words, it's, it's the scholarship is not all one-sided. Yeah, but, I'm, I'm, it's not all you one-sided. Know, do you know the Chabad? Uh, there are a number of Chabad communities here in San Marco. I grew up in the Chabad yeshiva system. You know Mrs. Levitansky? Oh, yes, I know Mrs. Levitansky. A very <laughs> sweet lady. Lovely lady. She's a very sweet If she was on the top and she was the Rebbe, she would probably send all the kids to college. Really? Yeah, but she wasn't that charismatic. Well, she had a lot to do with 15 kids. Excuse me, sir. If she was, uh, um, if she wa- if she was a uh, college educated, she would never let her kids uh, go without an education because they're hurting right now about it. All of them. Really? Whether they admit it or not doesn't matter. You could see pain. You could identify it. You don't need a microscope for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she well, went through and she did a library tour and she just read a little bit of history about education and what and how it helps the rational framework of living. She would never allow all those kids to uh, be abandoned. You know. Well, some of them are all over the world in Australia now. Some yes. of them are in uh, the Ukraine. I hope yes. they're all okay. Yes. Uh, let me so you see. felt you felt a need to warn me that uh, it's not one-sided. Yeah, yeah but. Um, I would need to know it from a from a Believe scholarship. Believe me, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, you know, immersed in this. It's just. I know there's a, it has a reputation for being. How did you know? You read the reviews just now. No, no. I've seen the, some of the book before. Oh, you saw it yourself. Yes. Wow. Why? Why, so why you, do you, you look so, so in, surprised? No, I'm not. I'm not well, surprised. I'm surprised about everything because I I didn't guess that. But you, so you, you thought this was a good book for me to read before Rosh Hashanah. Yeah. May, if I want inspiration, I could look at, uh, at nature, at God, maybe at a picture uh, of my grandfather or him in the tefillin, and, and, or I could listen to a song. But this is, no, this is about the life and afterlife. So it's, uh, mm-hmm. it's, mm-hmm. it's going to be very um, scholarly. Well, that's one of the things, that's one of the reasons the library has it, is because it isn't, they try to keep things balanced here. Oh, they do, so, they do. Yeah. They, have a, they, they do have a whole supernatural section. I, did, I explained to people that the way you learn critical science is not just the uh, information, it's so uh, you do science, you think scientifically, and you, be, you should be able to tell what's pseudoscience and what's real science. I mean, more know. objective anyway. You're yeah. So it's immersed yeah. in, in... I structure. met him many times. Met yeah, I oh. met him and I know him. Oh. I just felt the need to pick up the book one more time because I don't have it. I gave one away and, and I needed to look oh, at it again. Oh, don't run. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Thanks, Thank you. Um, 
but it doesn't it doesn't take away your, your ability to be uh, a humanist uh, is it, or, or you know it just helps you understand things the more you could understand something objectively the more you're able to manipulate the situation for the future well they have done I mean a remarkable job of taking over a good section of Brooklyn New York and they have a whole community there and it's thriving it's thriving you know, with the Mormons, with the Navo, U Utah was as big as Chicago at the time. Oh, and, you know, really? it, and yeah. it took a charismatic guy like Joseph Smith, who got arrested for suppressing a newspaper, and that's a very interesting story. And you're talking about uh, freedom and yeah. press, and you know, who knows? Uh, Hamad may take over the world. <laughs> they well, have so many children, you have no idea. Yeah. It, uh, no matter where they are. And they're all over. They're well, well, it was it, the Rebbe. Let, um, the Rebbe doesn't make up. Uh, uh, he doesn't make it impossible to be secular. He said uh, just add in acts of goodness and kindness. So you, some people feel like it's important to to um, take the Bible literally, um, mm -hmm. and it's important to be religious. Um, he actually was the first to be able to. Uh, um, have his students open shuls where uh, everyone can come. Of course, it doesn't always work out that way because it depends on the rabbi and his education and his tolerance and his ability to understand contradictions. Mm -hmm. However, um, how to be faithful and how to be free thinking, you know, how do you do both? But he was the one that uh, allowed, um, um, you know, you could drive to the shul. You don't encourage it, mm -hmm. but you're, it's the same system as reform. Yet you can still be kind of traditional and not lose your, you know, that um, kosher status yes. stamp. So he did that very clever, very cleverly because the Orthodox back in his time were always returning to become more fundamental. Yeah, and he said, "Oh, we're on a mission," and in the end of the day, what was the mission was basically. Um, you don't know what the mission is, and you're running in circles, and then it allows more people in. Nice.